biggest problems facing Bangalore today? Traffic. Second problem? Traffic. 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 Third problem? Traffic. No, no, mosquitoes. How many of you take spend more than one hour or more going to work or college every day? It's extremely stupid, right? <laughs> you could be using the time to be with your family or at least even by yourself if you don't like your family. <laughs> I don't know, you could do so many things. So, what we have not realized is that the anything with an internal combustion engine, whether it's a bike or a car, they're actually monsters. <laughs> and who have an insatiable appetite for feeding on you. You think you're using them, but they're monsters. They will never go away if you do not take a... So I started thinking, how can we fix this problem of traffic in the city? There's only one way. You've got to get rid of the monsters. So what do you know about Bangalore? Right? <laughs> If you look at, it is probably the fastest increasing population of almost any city in the world today. Now, let's look at the difference between just 2012 to 2000, uh, when the official census came, it was 9.6 million. We've already gone crazy, another 3 million people added. And if you look at the early 2000s, <laughs> so, hold on. But has the road surface increased? No. The road surface is still about 10 or 12,000 kilometers, which is about 8 to 10 percent of the total city is now a road. So we cannot have, if we keep endlessly widening the road to cater to vehicles, there may be only roads left in future and no buildings, you know, like the drain demolition that's going on. I think the, you have to smash half of Bangalore if you start looking at unauthorized drains or the same thing will happen if you keep widening roads. So obviously that's not a solution, right? Look at that crazy graph. <laughs> I mean, in the last, from 2005 to 2016, that could, I think, little bit of tweaking will become a vertical line. Every day, <laughs> every day, about close to, I think now, the, this is 2012 data, I think like 1,600 new vehicles are entering Indian Bangalore streets. You know, my real fear or maybe my real prayer is that one day there'll be such a big traffic jam that nothing can ever move again. <laughs> and you have to, you know, cut it open with gas welding torches or something. There's, that's it. After that, we only have to walk. Everything will just freeze and that's the end of traffic in Bangalore. The, that's what will happen if it goes on like this. The vehicle lobby in India, they're all, I mean, please remember even the biggest groups of India, the Tatas or the Bajaj, or what, they're all into the automobile industry. Right? And there's a vested interest to keep the automobile industry going. My I started asking the question, why do you need it at all? What if we can imagine a world where there are very few vehicles? I mean, there, you need vehicles. I'm not saying they're bad. All of them are bad. But why do you need so many? And why do you need... And each car, if you see in Bangalore, there's only one guy driving it. Why do they have four seats? Nobody remembers. <laughs> Even a bike, you see there's only one guy riding it. There are two seats on a bike. No, nobody... Everybody wants to have a much bigger thing than the capacity for themselves. And all of us are guilty. I mean, there's not one person in this room will say, I, I don't do it. What people don't realize is, at a very slow speed, an automobile emits five times as much pollutants as it is when it's going at the speed it's designed to be going. It, if the average speed is 60, 70 kilometers an hour, it's emitting only that much. As it slows down the combustion engine, all of you are engine, many of you are engineers, know that the efficiency drops dramatically and more pollution, pollution is coming out of it. So it's a double whammy. Not only do we have bad traffic, we have rotten air pollution and because of that, that you have a public health problem, because of rising respiratory illnesses, other congestion issues, maybe even you know, leading to cancers and things like that, which is a serious issue. But that's the whole point. They don't, they seem to be seeing the point at all, right? And this is what we get in India, a caste system. The bus guy will try to push the car guy, the car guy will try to hassle the bike guy, the bike guy will hassle the pedestrian, and the pedestrian doesn't know what to do, he tries to kick a dog, but the dog comes to bite him back. <laughs> no, it's just frustrating, right? It's impossible to... This is, a, this is not a tenable situation going forward, and all of you realize, so everybody says what to do. Okay, let's build more flyovers. You know, flyovers in a city are required only in three places. Across a river, then it's called a bridge. <laughs> Where a ring road meets an arterial road, which is a definite issue because you don't want two streams of traffic to hit each other. 
or over a railway track because the railway will not build flyover. <laughs> you understand? The railway will train will go straight. That's all. You have to go above it or under it. So, no other, you know, like, long ago, I was one of the earlier chief ministers of Karnataka and they had planned 42 flyovers in the city in the year 2001. And he had just come back from New York after attending some United Nations thing. And I asked him, he said, 43 flyovers, you know, grand plan, 2,000 crore. Everybody is already salivating at that number, <laughs> lots of money and all that stuff. And I said, you came back from New York City. New York City has a population of, like Bangalore, it's a one crore population, very dense. How many flyovers are there in the city of New York? Nil. Okay, remember that, zero. Do you think that has any less traffic than Bangalore or is it better managed? They'll say, no, it has underground. Okay, maybe it has, but not even one flyover. They have one which goes under the river. It's called a tunnel. <laughs> and they have one which goes across the river. That's called Brooklyn Bridge or something. So there is no flyover inside. The, in no, all the Western countries are breaking it. And we are stupidly following the US model by getting more private vehicles trying to, you know, becoming a slave to the, uh, uh, what do you call it, to the automobile and rather not understanding that there may be an Indian way to solve this problem which nobody ever thought of, right? So look at the modal split in Bangalore. All of this is, I know, is a bit of hard data and numbers, but you cannot understand this problem unless you, most of it is two-wheelers. And two-wheelers, to sorry to say, are like cockroaches. If they can get their front wheel in, they feel that they can somehow go and get ahead of everybody else. <laughs> you go on a footpath, you, you do. I mean, every, and the first picture showed you that, that. And because of this model split, even more delays and damage happens because nobody allows the other guy to go. In India, it's not important to be first. It's always important to be one inch ahead of the guy behind you. <laughs> right? So what does this, all this junk add up to? What is the impact on your life? Air pollution index in Bangalore is not so bad yet, but it's four times permitted limits already. All right, suspended particulate matter, three to four times. What else is the problem? You know the noise, guys honking. The decibel levels in Bangalore are crossing 80, 90 dB when it is supposed to be 78, 60, 70 dB. 55 dB is a norm, quiet, but it's almost double that and it's very cacophonic and you know, if you sit in your, there's a traffic jam outside where you live or where you work, the noise of the horns just drives you crazy, right, and etc. That last one, every, all, the, all the politicians and bureaucrats like the last one because that's an opportunity to spend lots of cash. Nobody asks, if, if you say flyover is 25 crore, nobody blinks. If you say I'm building a building 25 crore, really? I mean, that's a lot of money and all that, but you know, we lose track of what money is and a lot of money goes down the drain here. That one on top, we all like parks, but why do we call a place where you put cars parking? No, there's some problem there, right? And the word parks are great. We all want more parks, but you, these guys are occupying, they're covering up areas of the city as dead real estate, where you could be walking or you know, hanging around or maybe flowers growing instead. And there's dead cars all over the place and we don't charge anything in Bangalore for parking, which is again a wrong thing to do. Of course, accident rates. Suppose you have to go somewhere quickly, will you bother with app, gip and all that, what do you do? You'll go catch an auto and go. Correct, no? But autos are a pain. They will refuse to come. They're, they're not good in all kinds of weather. Sometimes they behave badly. <laughs> they don't go where you want to go. If you want, I am going, you can come kind of <laughs> attitude, which, uh, yeah. but what if, but the, the Uber guy never tells you that, no, the Uber guy always, Ola guy says, he doesn't even ask you where you want to go, it's already there on the app, you just get in, just go somewhere and he drops you in front of your house, so, why do we have this Uber and Ola and all are only accessible through apps? And there are only 100 million smartphones in India. And the common person still does not even have a, I mean, they, many of them have a hand phone, but nobody has all this. Why not just stick your hand out and say, stop, I want to go somewhere. Why is the taxi system not available in this city? There are various political and business competition reasons, but I think this needs to be overthrown. Why? Because it actually solves every single thing. We have to now remember to call taxis as public transport.
that is the fundamental shift in thinking we taxis are no longer some private business what if you reimagine taxis as the fun it, it's a quite a crazy idea because it's never been tried anywhere in the world everybody keeps trying to build more and more infrastructure or singapore tries to put congestion taxes stuff like that which people don't like paying etc etc what and in india if you add any more taxes people will start screaming now so how do you do it without doing without doing that so look at the cost of running a various things in the city a bus costs a lot of money to run okay the fare is fairly low see at ordinary car a private taxi or this thing is only you are only traveling about 25 kilometers a day when you take out your car or two wheeler going and coming is about 10 to 12 kilometers going back also is about 10 to 12 km that's all that's the average but a taxi runs 200 and odd kilometers a day a single day it runs about 200 kilometers that means it's going almost 9 to 10 times more than you nine times at least more than you take out your private car so it sounds it doesn't sound like a great idea but go home and think about it actually so okay so one taxi replaces 10 two wheelers it replaces eight cars and also two autos right now assume a scenario where we provide we add six i mean something like close to 6 lakh taxis in a graded steps of 2 lakh each in a city across the next one year 80% of private cars is which is 10 lakh cars 35 lakh two wheelers and all the 100% of autos you make them into taxi drivers and send all the autos off to some official areas we don't want autos anymore no let somebody else have it get rid of them all as an exchange scheme and an upgrade scheme <laughs> right and you also put gps you put all the goody stuff in all the fixed fare logic okay the number of vehicles in bangalore will reduce by 4.2 million it's right now six, it's like 42 lakh vehicles will disappear think about it it's a mathematical calculus i know it sounds very idealistic and all that but is you need something like this rather than okay suddenly the graph will look like that and we'll go back to some 2005 level it was okay 2005 the city was reasonably all right you could get around within about half an hour to anywhere right i'm not counting all the trucks and all that stuff and also triple or quadruple the number of buses right so what will happen they'll say what is the you have to what i'm saying is you have to also subsidize this taxi to less than a two wheeler and whatever the extra is the government has to pay as a freebie you don't make it totally free make it like so the rise in public health the congestion laws recovered all the extra space that we we can have you know what you, what i call footpath widening scheme instead of road widening scheme make all the footpaths little wider and also the amount of co we also have a green piece to it the number of carbon monoxide and dioxide emissions will reduce drastically of course the state tax taxes fuel a lot this is going to be losses because of that but these are all notional losses the gain in environmental quality the brownie points that you get of having thought of something no other city in the world has thought of saying that the entire transport of the city is run by public taxis the new world they are not private taxis and but we have bad news just when we thought we were coming out of the water people are listening to us we are getting tender sure you know the amount of money from chanakya i'm sorry chalukya circle to makri circle they are going to build this flyover this is 1800 crore again to for the car industry and for vip it's a very elitist project in my opinion just to make people easier to go make people go to the airport the airport gets a million passengers a year do you know how much kempegowda bus station gets every year 5 million people and not 1 rupee they will spend there this is all i would rather upgrade kempegowda bus station and that city station area where you know 5 50 lakh people go there rather than this airport is okay we can manage a little bit you know it's not so bad leave a little early it's not going to once we have taxis you can get there still in 45 minutes so you don't need this kind of heavy duty project but we all know why these projects are also brought up the we have to this a nexus which is happening which has to be broken and these are you know these are the reasons why bangalore continues to get more and more jammed up my real dream is that we go away from this vehicle centered mentality to a pedestrian centered mentality and a simple 
low cost public transport solution for the city which will solve our existing problem thank you